Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and in this video I'm going to cover three possible solutions for when your Windows developed games just don't want to work with Steam Proton. Now obviously before I continue this video I'm going to make three assumptions. Firstly, you've checked out ProtonDB and you've read reports about the game in question and you have actually confirmed that it does indeed run on Linux. Secondly, you've confirmed that your GPU does indeed support Vulkan because if I'm honest with you, if it doesn't, you're going to find performance is going to be very lacking and honestly my advice at that point is don't use Linux for gaming, use Windows 10 instead. And finally, you've actually tried a different version of Proton. Now whether this is an early version or even a custom one such as Proton GE. So if, you've, if all these assumptions are correct, then let's move on to the rest of the video. So solution one is to install the latest driver for your GPU. Now, you may think, well, this is pretty obvious. Well, it is really, but it is also very important if you want to be playing the latest release games on Linux, as often what you'll find is that you will need to have that installed if you even want to launch those games. Now, that being said, having access to latest GPU drivers will actually depend on your distribution. And I'll give you an example. So if you're using a roll and release distribution such as Arch or Manjaro, you'll likely find that you will have access to the latest drivers before any other fixed release distribution such as Ubuntu. That being said, it shouldn't discourage you from using a distribution based on Ubuntu, as all you need to really do is add a single PPA, and that will get you the same driver version available on a run and re release distribution. Now, it may not be exactly the same time, but you'll certainly get it within a couple of days at most. Now, if you're unsure how to install drivers on your distribution, there's a great guide you can find, and that's found on the Lutris Wiki, in particular their page on installing drivers. And it will cover the method of installing both AMD and NVIDIA drivers on Arch, Manjaro, Fedora, and Ubuntu-based distributions. Now, most of the time when it comes to installing drivers, what you'll typically find is that you'll install it straight from your distribution's repository or some external source. In fact, many distributions out there nowadays have a GUI tool for this purpose. Alternatively, you can always resort to terminal commands. So I'm just going to make a note about AMD drivers, as often what you'll hear is that they're included in the Linux kernel. Now, the situation with AMD drivers is slightly more complicated than that. Whereas with NVIDIA, you have a single proprietary driver. As a general rule, AMD have three drivers. You've got two open source ones and one proprietary, and all three of them can coexist alongside each other. Now, explain the difference between all of them is beyond the scope of this video. So for about 99% of cases, you're gonna be using the Mesa open source driver, which again, depending on your distribution, may not be installed or enabled by default. In addition, if you have a Radeon R9 200 300 series GPU, then you will need to manually blacklist the Radeon module in order to use Vulkan. Now, luckily you can find instructions on how to do that, and I'll leave a link to this in the description on the Proton GitHub page. So solution two is to delete any existing Wine prefix folders. So when it comes to installing Steam games on Linux, what typically happens is that the game itself is installed in the SteamAC folder. And at the same time, a accompanying wine prefix is created in the Compact folder. So for example, if you installed Fallout New Vegas, the game itself would be installed in the SteamAC slash common folder. And at the same time, a prefix of 22380 will be created in the Compact Data folder. Now this is important because sometimes if you switch between Proton versions, what can happen is the wine prefix can get a bit confused and not correctly register, and that is a reason for the game to not load. Now this is more apparent if you use custom versions of Proton, such as Proton GE, as they'll have separate fixes to the default Proton builds. So as a good practice, before you switch your Proton versions, it's always a good idea to remove the, uh, the compact data for that particular installation. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can obviously right click it, then press delete, like so. Or alternatively, you can open up the terminal and delete it that way as well. So for example, to delete Fallout New Vegas, you type in the following command, which is rm-h 
R dash, and then reference the folder, which in this case is double two three eight zero, and then press enter. Uh, obviously, if you do this, a word of warning, this will delete any graphical settings and any save games that are stored locally in that prefix. If that game does not support cloud save, make sure you have backed them up beforehand, as this method will completely remove it and not place it in the recycle bin. So you cannot undo this action. So solution three is not to use NTFS as your file system. Now this is not so much a solution as a piece of advice. So when it comes to installing games on Linux, and especially Windows developed games, you do want to be using the native Linux file system, which for most cases is EXT4. Now, normally what would happen is people will have an existing Steam library on Windows, and this be installed on the file system formatted as NTFS. And although you'll find Windows can absolutely read and write to NTFS file systems, when it comes to launching games from them, it's a completely different matter. Again, this is the explanation for this is kind of beyond the scope of this video, but just to simplify things, due to the differences in permissions when it comes to ext4 and ntfs file systems, this is the reason why it would prevent games from launching. So, if I'm honest with you, it's better to reinstall your games. Now, I will point out there is documentation available that will tell you exactly how to get a NTFS formatted disk to work with Proton. However, there is always the risk of data loss. And for that reason and that reason alone, I do not recommend you do it. But again, it's your system at the end of the day. Well, hopefully after applying one of the two of these solutions, you've resolved your problem and now all of your games are now successfully loading. Either way, with that, it brings this video to an end. As always, thank you very much for watching. And if you did find this video helpful, and of course, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.